to get a bath. I did. I did. <laughs> hey, good evening. It's a Sunday night, and we're doing something a little bit different this week. I'm heading out east towards Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, I've been invited to record some video footage of them setting up carnival rides at uh, an event called the Dogwood Festival. I am particularly fascinated by how carnival rides are set up. More specifically, I'm interested in how they fold up for travel. This is gonna be kind of a fun trip for me, but it's also a learning trip. One of the issues that I have is that the rocket ride, it was never intended for the rocket vehicles to actually travel on the trailer with the tower. Uh, they mention in the brochure that it can be uh, pulled by any vehicle, but oh, by the way, you gotta put the cars in a separate truck, and that's just inconvenient. There's operators out there who have modified theirs. They've added racking that the cars go on, and that's what I wanna do. Go out here and see if I can get any, uh, any ideas, best practices maybe, little things I can pick up. My goal here is to focus specifically on the zipper ride. In my mind, it's one of the more elaborate rides that can all fold up onto a single trailer. And uh, I'm really keen to see how that works. I know that that one trailer, it holds all the decking, all the fencing, all the cosmetics and scenery. It's all on one unit. And I really wanna see how that particular ride sets up. Hey, this is Pete coming to you from the future, and I just want to say that I didn't do a lot of narration while I was recording this video, primarily because uh, most of the time I didn't know what they were doing until after they had done it, and I didn't want to get in their way asking uh, a lot of questions and overextend my welcome. So I'm going to go back in now and do uh, some voiceover on any of the things that I thought were either particularly interesting or important. One thing I think is pretty slick is that the ride is leveled using hydraulic cylinders and the pump that they use to run those cylinders is the same pump that will later run the ride. This brace on the back of the trailer will eventually hold the decking that the riders walk up to get on the ride. The hydraulic cylinders are just used to aid in leveling the ride. In operation, the ride is actually sitting on large screw jacks and cribbing blocks. After the ride is resting on its jack screws, the hydraulic cylinders can be retracted. They use a combination of ratchet straps and some special tub lock brackets to hold everything in place while it's going down the road. Well, you remember all the pins on the bottom point down, all the pins on top point up, right? All the pins on the bottom point up and all the pins on the top point down. Yep. He knows all the tricks to it. Yeah. Yeah. I use the spoon bar. I brought, I brought a brought one of the spoon bars from the shop. Yeah. I left the tub up on my shoulder and rack it. Oh, yeah? Yeah.
So to me, the zipper is really like a roller coaster that just happens to be attached to a Ferris wheel. Even the wheels on the ride are similar to a roller coaster. You've got your main trolley wheels, and then you have upstop wheels on the other side of the track, and inside friction wheels, all just going around an oval-shaped track. The tubs are mounted in pairs on a framework that's attached to the drive cable. You have the main H frame that the tubs are mounted to, and then you have K bars that spread the tubs apart. Another feature with a double purpose, which I think is pretty cool, is the doors on the cabinets under the belly of the trailer fold up to form a catwalk that's used to help set up the ride. There's a large hydraulic cylinder that's used to raise the tower, but just like with the leveling, that cylinder is not used to hold the tower during operation. There's additional bracing that goes in place. Unfortunately, the rain chased us away, but they did get the ride up and stabilized. The only thing really left to do was the scenery and some fine tuning. So a few folks came back the next day just to finish up. So here's another item with a dual purpose. In the belly of the trailer, along with the hydraulic pump, is an air compressor. And that air compressor is used for the air brakes when the ride is running. When you're setting up the ride, you can use the hose to adjust the tire pressure on these wheels that drive the cable hub. The controls are pretty straightforward. You have a forward and reverse for the boom, which runs hydraulically, and then forward and reverse for the cable, which runs on four electric motors. There's also an air-operated handbrake. It really is amazing how quiet this is for putting out 450,000 watts. I mean, I can hear it, but I can talk next to it. This is what the inside of one of the boxes look like that takes the voltage from the generator and distributes it amongst the rides and games and concession stands.
So I think this is a good time to thank Majestic Midways uh, for allowing me to come out and record this, and a special thanks to Jay and Tony. One of the last jobs to do is to adjust the cross cables. These are small little aircraft cables that go diagonally between carriages. They're used to help compensate for small amounts of misalignment in the seat support axles. They basically encourage the uh, carriage to run true. So I think I picked up a few ideas on that trip that I'm going to be able to put to use on our own project, both the rocket and uh, here with the combo ride. And if you want to see more videos like this, you'll just have to let me know down in the comments. I realize this is a vast departure from what we normally do here on the channel. But if you want to follow all those projects, click that link to the left and come along for the ride.